So, hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Saskia and I am a second year psychology student. Today I thought I'd do a video about the IB because basically I am a tutor and A-level students all got like their advanced notice stuff. IB students got nothing. Um, is it, it, I mean it is probably to do with the fact that our country can't deal with the whole situation where other countries have done much better and the IB is international so it's not really fair to give people who haven't been affected the advance notices but yeah I have a lot of opinions about the advance notices actually just now popping in here to tell you that I only just remembered that the IB students don't have to do paper three which I literally mentioned in this video but actually no that is a, I would say that's probably a bigger advantage although in some cases like for psychology paper three really is where people shine so I would say it's definitely helpful that they don't have to do paper three I don't know if that works for every single subject within the IB but an advanced notice still would have been quite nice. I'd say everyone's on kind of level playing fields now, so ignore what I say next. Um, but mostly that they are unfair, considering, like I know that all A-level students got them, but IB students in England are still gonna have to do the same amount of work, if that makes sense. Like, it's still just as hard. So I thought I would give some tips for the IB, mostly for paper one and paper two, because I know that this year's not doing paper three, which, it's really upsetting. Oh, I'm doing biology tips, by the way, because psychology, I feel like you just have to do it. Um, and I've done a video on psychology, ERQs, SAQs, um, I've done like IA videos, but I'm not gonna lie for psychology, the fact that you can't do a paper three is genuinely upsetting. Paper three is a gold mine of marks. Paper two destroys you. Paper one and paper three pull you all the way straight back up. So basically I will start, I'll start with paper one. Paper one, there aren't that many tips, but trust yourself. If you've done enough revision, chances are the first answer that you think is correct is probably the one that is correct. Like, do not go back and change your answers, please, because the amount of times that I've looked through a paper that I've done and I've circled the correct answer, and then because the paper one is an hour, it's not gonna take you an hour unless you like really struggle to read, but like, it took me 20 minutes to do paper one, and I would just go spend that last 40 minutes going back and changing my answers when I wasn't wrong. And like I knew deep down I wasn't wrong, but I didn't know for a fact I wasn't wrong. And like you can't add anything in paper one. In paper two you can always go back and add stuff and that's not taking away your marks. But in paper one if you change anything, you've probably lost a mark. But yeah, in the IB for paper one you get four options. Two of them are kind of obviously wrong. They're not obviously wrong, but they're much less obviously correct. And then there are the two options that are pretty much identical in the sense that like one of them will say RNA, one of them will say DNA but with the same string of words before that. So you just, first of all, you know, trial and error. Remove, remove, what is it called? Like deduction? Get rid of the ones that are wrong. Just score a line through them or put like an X next to it so you can still read it. And then look at the two that are correct or correct. And then just give it a go. Whichever one feels right. Sometimes there's a clue in the question. Sometimes little little things like the um, like when they put a picture and they put the citation. Sometimes that's helpful. As in one of my paper twos, not paper one, but one of my paper twos, I had a citation, and it was literally it, it was like this is a conifer tree. And then the next question was what is the plant phylum? And I was like oh well it's a conifer. I was like thank God because I wouldn't have guessed. I don't know what trees look like. But yeah, paper one, trust yourself. Power of deduction. Um, read the question and cover the answers and then think, right, what is my answer? Have your answer and then look through. <sighs> Scribble all over it, to be honest. Like, I would draw little, 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 like, square boxes to be hearts and I was like, Where, where's my blood? Where is it gone? I would, like, track the blood through my little, little heart diagrams. Do, do whatever you can. Paper one is worth doing well in if you can, but it isn't the end of the world if you don't do well. I think... I think I ended up getting a five in paper one in my last set of mocks. Like, I wasn't far off a six, as in I think I was literally one mark off a six, but I could have probably got a relatively low five and still come out with my seven because my paper two was so much stronger. So paper one, it really isn't the end of the world if you don't know it. There are loads of examples, they really do reuse questions. Um, 
So go through the example papers because they're gonna reuse them, guaranteed. Um, it's just how it is. Like look at the time zone one and the time zone two papers for one year and just learn the answers because a lot of it is they're just, they almost just copy and paste the questions back in for the new year. So then for paper two, hmm, paper two is harder. Objectively, there's a lot more to do and it does take your time. With the data questions, read the data, figure out what topic the question is about. So I think our data question ended up being about Ebola, which is clearly linking to immunity, so I have to think of points from immunity that link to Ebola. So it's something about like vaccination, and I was like, well, I can obviously mention stuff I know about vaccination. They don't put data questions in that you can't use your knowledge from another topic on. If it's about trees, um, it's either topic four or topic nine. Like, try and kind of gauge what topic it is, and then once you've gauged the topic, you can just you can just blurt facts. If it says like explain why you think this happened, you probably know. Like they're not they're not trying to make you guess. Chances are you do actually know, or the data very clearly tells you. And like you get loads and loads of data, so do just spend your time reading that data. Mention specific points. They love it when you mention a data point. If you're like, oh, but this is an anomaly, or this breaks the trend. Like mention a specific data point. Mention kind of if it's like two marks overall trend so as the time increased there was less trees in this forest however like specific data point in 2003 there was more trees in the forest which goes against the overall trend like things like that because you're still explaining the trend but you're adding detail which they do like just in terms of any question you get to find something um probably not for data but honestly some of the data questions if they mention vaccination what is a vaccine Define anything. Things, tiny statements really get you marks. They mention water like once in a question, but as soon as that word water's there, oh, it moves by osmosis, I'm telling you right now, or it's used in hydrolysis and condensation. That might not be in the mark scheme, but chances are you get silly marks. Like they really are happy to give you marks for nothing. So even if you don't know what the answer is, define the words in the question. If it's about digestion, oh, digestion is this. And then, right, where does that maybe happen? Mm, stomach? Like, give it a guess. Just shove statements in. Shove points about that topic that you know are correct. Or that you just, that could be correct. Like, oh, digestion's going from big to small. Oh, what kind of reaction is that? Oh, it's a hydrolysis reaction, which means this happens. Like, just logically think it through. And also explain everything. If you're going to say it's a hydrolysis reaction, what are you going from? What are you going to? Are you adding water? Are you taking away water? You can't just say it's a hydrolysis reaction. Even though like, you'd expect the IB to know, but you have to treat your examiner like they're a dum-dum. Um, you really have to say everything. Um, so always start your questions with, digestion is, transpiration is, inheritance is. It's dumb, but it does get you those marks. Like you can literally just bullet point definitions and you probably get quite a few marks for that. Also, whenever you are outlining a process seems obvious but do it in order like they don't specifically mark you down for not doing it in order but it doesn't make sense to not like I would just imagine like the Calvin cycle and think right well I have to start here and I have to get back to this so how do I get back follow the actual order of the cycle it just make sure that you don't miss anything don't think oh well I remember what happens with photosystem one no photosystem two starts remember that like try and do it in order try and make it really clear you can literally bullet point as in my quest, one of my like eight markers, nine markers was on osmoregulation and ADH. What is ADH? What is osmoregulation? Where does ADH come from? Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. All of that. And then I had to mention water. What can I mention about water? Oh, it moves by osmosis. Beautiful, little points. Like you learn so much useless crap in the IB. Don't let it be useless. Do just shove it in. Like if you know that your question is from topic three of genetics, and you can roughly gauge it's from 3.4. What do you remember from 3.4? Shove that in, go for it. They're not gonna take away marks unless you've gone really, really wrong. So like, if you're asked to explain photosynthesis and you explain transpiration, yeah, you've made a boo-boo. If you're asked to explain photosynthesis and you start talking about action potentials, not action potentials, action spectrums or absorption spectrums, you are kind of correct. Like, it is from that same topic, so you could get marks. So yeah, give any extra details, like, Anything you can say, always, always, definition, 
where the thing happens. Digestion is, it happens here. Photosynthesis is, it happens here. As much as you can say, can you give an equation? Probably not, but give it a go. Then when you have comparison questions, you need two points to get a mark. If you are, this is the question they love, comparison of a pro and a eukaryotic cell, beautiful. Or we had to compare xerophytes and halophytes, beautiful. Xerophytes in a table one side, halophytes on a table one side, draw a line, draw a line. Right, first point, mm, let's say we're doing, we're doing pro and, pro and eukaryotic cells, Dora the Explorer, Bio Ninja, D, DNA, right. Prokaryotic cells have naked DNA, what's my equivalent point for a eukaryotic cell? You have to have the equivalent. So, oh, my DNA is protein bound or histone bound. Those two points together are one mark. You cannot put the prokaryotic DNA as naked, ignore eukaryotic DNA. You will not get any marks at that point. Yes, you are correct, but you have not made any comparison. BioNinja has chef's kiss acronyms for everything. Um, for membrane protein functions, jet rat, for Comparing pro and eukaryotic cells, Dora, Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer is my favourite girlie. Um, she really did get me through that. Well, what other ones are there? There are definitely loads. Like, there are loads, some of them are dumb, but Dora the Explorer does help. Um, Dora the Explorer gets me all those marks. Do it in a table. Your answer, because the comparison questions are literally only going to be worth, like, four marks. Although for um, topic 11, spermatogenesis and oogenesis, that might be worth eight marks, but they're still not gonna mark you better for writing it as sentences. Like you can write it as a sentence that says, somatogenesis happens here, oogenesis happens here. Make that one sentence with two separate sections, one for each point. You have to have two points to get one mark. So like your couplet of points is one mark. Every couplet is a set of marks. If, you, if it's a four mark question, you need eight points in four couplets. Does that make sense? You have to have the opposite point. Otherwise, you've not made a comparison, you've made a statement, so you've not compared anything. You've described a prokaryotic cell, but you've made no attempt to compare it, so you've not answered the question, so you get a zero. Oh, that was a bit speedy. I'm very aggressive about that. People always forget, I was literally not taught this. Um, I only know this from Bio Ninja because Bio Ninja told me. <laughs> Thanks, Bio Ninja. Honestly, make statements, draw pictures if you can. They're never gonna discredit you for drawing a picture. If you're asked to talk about photosynthesis, you can you can draw a little, a photosynthesizing plant. You can draw the electron transport chain. You can draw the photosystems getting excited. If, you, if a drawing will help, make a drawing. Make it relevant, label it. Then, don't, don't make it more complex than it has to be. A lot of the time, the questions are just simple. Sometimes the questions are dumb. Like there are questions that are like outline the principles of immunity. I don't know what that means, but I can outline what immunity is, how immunity happens, um, and the types of immunity. So I'm going to do that. If you don't know what the question is asking you to do, think about what topic it's in. So immunity, that's 6.5, 6.3, I don't know, 6 point something. I would just write down the immunity stuff that I know. But first of all, what am I gonna do? Define immunity, that's your first mark. None of your questions have to be answered like an essay, but they all, I would say anything five marks and above warrants an introduction. And by an introduction, I do literally just mean transpiration is this, it happens here, full stop. That is all you need to get those kind of extra points that people forget to do. Like you can get a lot of marks for just blurting stuff that you know, literally just blurt what you know. Um, that is all I have to say. I don't have too many tips. It is literally just about learning the mark scheme, blurting, definitions, and just give all the detail that you know. Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, move on. And paper one, it just sucks, but <laughs> it's, you just have to guess and stick with your guess. But yeah, thank you for watching. Yeah.